so i would like to request honorable toshihiro kaneko on stage before he come here i would like to mention a brief about him he did bachelor's from kobe university masters in international relations from australia he has served various japanese missions across the globe including philippines seattle kuwait and new york he was also a part of 2019 g sum g20 summit as well as 2020 olympics and paralympics please welcome honorable toshihiro kaneko Yes, uh, Deshimuk-san, Chodrei-san, uh, Chodrei-san, and uh, uh, Indo-Japan uh, Business Council board members, honorable guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, namaste, namaskar, konnichiwa, pune. Thank you very much for the kind introduction of my, myself about uh, my career in uh, foreign affairs of Japan. I'm really honored uh, to be here, uh, to be invited to this uh, Konnichiwa Pune uh, event. I'm really happy that uh, many of the people uh, here in Pune and uh, our region are interested in Japan. Now, today's uh, my uh, remarks is about the uh, India and Japan, 70 years diplomatic relations and uh, beyond. This is a very, very difficult question. Now, uh, I would like to look back a little bit about the uh, history between Japan and uh, India. First of all, uh, this year celebrates the uh, 70th anniversary of its uh, diplomatic relationship between Japan and India. And uh, Japan and India has a, a long history, which started in 6th century and has been continuing 1,500 years since when Buddhism arrived in Japan, born in India, as uh, uh, pointed out uh, by Chancellor at MIT. Yes, thank you. And uh, in this regard, uh, Indian Buddhist monk uh, came to Japanese ancient capital Nara and opened eyes of giant Buddha, which was a striking event in this history. I also would like to point out that the uh, Indian West Coast is very im important in Japan, uh, Japanese, uh, Japan India relationship. Modern history of Japan India relationship has started. From Mumbai, uh, when Tata family, in collaboration with Japanese companies, commenced cotton trade by establishing regular shipping route between Mumbai and Kobe under Nippon Yusen Company in 1893. The Consulate General of Japan in Mumbai was also opened in that same year. By the way, I am uh, from Kobe, uh, western part of Japan, and I grew up together with Indian community there since that uh, modern history. Now, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, Japan and India relationship uh, towards the future. I uh, would like to talk about a little bit about the uh, open, uh, free and open Indo-Pacific policy Japan is uh, strongly promoting. Now, friendly Japan-India relationship is very important for free and open Indo-Pacific policy, which is a key for 
for severity and the prosperity of international community. I would like to explain about what the uh, free and open Indo-Pacific policy. Free and open Indo-Pacific policy connects the very prospective uh, continents of Asia and uh, Africa through the Indian and uh, Pacific Ocean. That is a key for the prosperity severity of the international community, specifically, uh, specifically uh, in this region. However, there are many challenges, such as piracy, terrorism, proliferation of weapons of mass destructions, natural disasters, and attempts to change the uh, status quo. Japan aims to promote peace, stability, and prosperity across the region to make the Indo-Pacific free and open as international public goods through ensuring rule-based international order, including the rule of law, freedom of navigation and overfright, peaceful settlement of disputes, and promotion of free trade. Now, I would like to turn to uh, the efforts what uh, Japan and uh, India has been uh, working on to materialize this goal. First, let's look at the uh, Japan-India defense cooperation. As you can see the uh, slide, both countries have been doing a variety of uh, maritime uh, exercises with Navy, Indian Navy and Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. JIMEX, which was conducted September 2022, the latest one, uh, Japan-India Maritime Exercise, conducted in Bengal Bay. Japan-India bilateral exercise took place in July 2020, Indian Ocean. Multilateral defense cooperation including Japan and India, Sea Dragon, January 2022, United States uh, Initiative with participation from Japan, uh, India, Australia, Canada, Korea, it's about the anti-submarine uh, mission exercises near Guam, Western Pacific. Uh, Peru, April 2022, uh, Japan, uh, India, uh, France, Australia, near Estonia, next to Australia. Then Marabao exercise uh, just completed in Japan, near Japan Ocean, Sagamihara Bay. November 20, 2022. That's a initiative of India, Japan, US, Australia. That's the quad corporations, which we have been uh, working on very strongly. So it's about the uh, security perspective. Now I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, economic part. So as uh, probably you will be the more expertise in this uh, topic, but uh, I'd like to talk about the Japanese companies in India. As you can see the uh, graph that the number of Japanese companies here in India has been increasing, I mean constantly increasing. This year, unfortunately, um, first decline in a number of Japanese companies since uh, the survey began in 2006. But uh, uh, this uh, Japanese uh, commitment in uh, economic cooperation with India, as you would know that the Prime Minister Kishida visited India and uh, set target 
three trillion Indian rupee investment in India by Japanese in five years, which was made uh, promised in May 2022. The number of bases uh, in Mahastra is 2020, 811, then now to 787 in 2021, the latest figure. And uh, in Pune, uh, Japanese uh, nationals residing in this region is about 250, with Japanese companies about 200. While uh, Mumbai, Japanese nationals about 800, and Japanese countries, 300. So you can see that the uh, importance of Pune for Japanese companies in our economic relationship. In order to strengthen this uh, economic, uh, the cooperation in, in economic sphere, Japanese government has been working on very hard to extend assistance to India so as you might know that the uh, Japan India Institutes for Manufacturing, JIM, uh, 22 hubs we have, which are the Japanese government initiative for the Japanese companies to establish the institutes, currently 22 hubs to India, uh, for the Indian use, the Japanese companies uh, train the technology, skill, uh, education by Japanese uh, companies hands-on in India, such as Maruti Suzuki and others, which was decided in 2016, uh, in November, in a bilateral Japan-India summit meeting during the Prime Minister Abe period. Then, since that time, in 10 years, we are targeting 30,000 Indian youth to be trained in skilled technology. The fields of the uh, technological cooperation by Japanese government. We emphasize, especially advanced uh, cooperation with innovative technologies, energy, smart cities, IoT, aerospace, science and technology, startups, and disaster risk management. Now, uh, I would like to draw your attention, look at the, that the developmental, uh, Japanese government developmental economic assistance in West Coast. The flagship project, as you would be uh, very much aware, that the uh, Mumbai Ahmedabad high-speed rail project Japanese economic cooperation development assistance emphasizes specifically very, very important quality infrastructure by loan, uh, and loan project. So that project, high-speed rail, connects Ahmedabad and Mumbai two destinations, 505 kilometers. When it's completed, first phase in 2026, it will connect two destinations in two hours. That Bure train, Japanese technology, runs 320 kilometers per hour. That has been uh, made 
by the Japanese government commitment in 2017, initial stage 700 million US dollars. Then I would like to look at other major Japanese assistance projects in Maharashtra. As you will be uh, able to see on our slide, that the, you'd know that Colaber uh, Bandra Sips Metro 3 subway that will be completed the initial phase by 2023, by the end of next year. That has been committed by the Maharashtra government. Mumbai Trans Harbor Link, that will connect Mumbai Central Siri to uh, Nabi Mumbai to be completed by the, again, the end of next year, 2023. 22 kilometers longest bridge in India, and you will benefit a lot that the travel time will be dramatically, drastically shortened between Mumbai and Pune. Delhi, Mumbai, dedicated freight corridor, 1,500 kilometers, cargo train line. That will make an, uh, uh, contribute to build up the industrial hub in Northwest India, which will be materialized as Derry Mumbai Industrial Corridor. So I'd like to emphasize that the, the Japanese government considers that the Maharashtra is a powerhouse of India's economy, home to the financial capital of India, which the Pune is a part. Quality infrastructure in Maharashtra will be which the Japanese government has been working on very hard. It will be another growth story waiting to, be, to happen. All these projects together will create efficient, smooth, and environmental friendly transport infrastructure of people, goods, and services for further economic development in Maharashtra. Japan uh, considers public transportation is very important for economic development and environmental protection. So that's all about the uh, Japan and India have been working on, especially the Japanese government has been very much committed to be promoting and working on to strengthen the friendship between Japan and India. The ultimate goal would be for the purpose of prosperity, severity, and uh, international rule-based, free and open Indo-Pacific. Now, it's time for you that the Japan-India friendship and India's development will be depending on you, whether you would kindly consider Japan as a friend to continue to work together towards the future.
just uh, uh, I direct you add that the in a uh, grassroots level on the ground that under our Japanese consulate in Mumbai's jurisdiction, we have uh, local government uh, sister connections. Specifically here in Pune with Okayama Prefecture and uh, Mumbai with Yokohama City, Maharashtra State with Wakayama Prefecture and Kobe uh, and Ahmedabad. It's in uh, Gujarat, but uh, uh, under our jurisdiction, so Kobe and uh, uh, Ahmedabad, as, and also Shogo Prefecture and Gujarat State. The grassroots people-to-people uh, -people connection. So. Uh, I direct you, just to remind you, for your future consideration of working together. So uh, yes, that's all for my uh, remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, Danya Bard and arigato gozaimasu. I would request if anyone want to ask any question. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Konika san. My name is Dr. Sandeep Kadwe. My question is related to the projects, which are uh, very high in terms of the investments. We understand your point that Indo-Japanese relationship uh, would care for the environmental and eco e ecological aspects of the project. Uh, what I just observed uh, in your first slide, uh, which is related to Mumbai, Ahmedabad, bullet train. Uh, with all due respect to uh, the policy makers, and the people who are involved in conceiving and implementing this project. Uh, this project is taking a long time in implementation because uh, the acquisition of land and the local uh, resistance. Uh, would it not have been uh, easier to have a C link between uh, the nearest port to Ahmedabad uh, via Mumbai, probably extending up to uh, Goa, and instead of building the project on Mumbai Ahmedabad Road, could it have been implemented through the land, which is Mumbai to Nagpur until, let's say, Orissa, uh, which had been, uh, uh, which would have brought more value in terms of the investments, the impact on the business? and the logistic convenience for the entire nation. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm asking an issue which is related to policy, uh, but you are the right person being in charge of the policies between India and Japan. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, thank you very much for your uh, valuable questions. Yes, um, the project plan will be totally depend on Indian government which project you would like to implement and request to the Japanese assistance. So I understand that the uh, Ahmedabad Mumbai High Speed Railway has been requested by the Indian government. So uh, probably in the future if you think that uh, connecting east and west of Maharashtra by uh, a train we welcome that the, for your Indian government to request to the uh, Japanese government. Then uh, probably uh, the detail of the project will be explained by the uh, Jaika-san, uh, which will be in present today, later. But uh, that's we hope that the, for the uh, 
welfare and uh, development of the Indian people here in Maharashtra. We uh, look forward to your future, uh, the collaborations between Japan and India. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I had opportunity to work in Japan with Chiyoda-san in Surumi, Yokohama from 91 to 94 on an LNG plant which we did uh, for Abu Dhabi as a part of Chiyoda. So I, I have learnt a lot and whatever I am today, part of that learning comes from Japan. So thank you very much. Uh, we, I am here basically, um, I, we do business in climate control and inner environmental technologies and nanotechnology. So I would like to connect with the Japanese business community specifically on climate control, nanotechnology, this two and environmental basically technologies. So we are doing uh, as a part of JICA, uh, the Delhi Okla project, sewage treatment plant, we are cleaning the biogas generated out of the uh, Sue, uh, the sewage treatment plant, which is the largest plant in Asia. We are also involved in uh, Kondli project of JICA, which is basically handled by uh, Triveni, uh, Triveni is a company, and we are uh, supplying our technologies and the project. So we'd like to work with the uh, Japanese project in advance, you know. So, and we are developing one uh, food processing plant here in Pune for spices, where we will basically collect the uh, raw spices from various parts of India and uh, grind them with the latest technology, with the cryogenic technology and export it to the world. So we would like to, I would like to understand from you anyone from Japanese business community offering grinding technology with the cryogenic uh, technology. Right. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you uh, for your questions. Um, Today I uh, don't think that the uh, JETRO uh, organization, which is the subsidiary organization of the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry of Japanese government is present here, but uh, for the platform of connecting the business relationship between in the, uh, Japan and India, I would like to guide you to uh, contact with the Mumbai office, uh, uh, JETRO office so that uh, they have variety of tools. Actually, they are all, uh, most of them are carried on the website, but uh, you can uh, register your information where, for example, you'd like to invest in Japan, uh, which uh, fields of uh, uh, industries you'd like to collaborate with Japanese companies. Those tools are on website. So uh, I'd like to uh, encourage and recommend you to register those information on the website under JETRO tools so that you will be able to uh, find the good possible uh, corporations, the collaborations with Japanese uh, businesses in the field. Thank you. Daniel Bada, thank you very much.